This is Alan Weinkrantz for EveryWire, and I'm here with Kurt Scharf, who's Vice President and Principal Analyst for Parks and Associates. Welcome. Thanks, Alan. I'm here at your office uh, in Dallas, and Kurt, you've been here for over a decade. You were telling me for 12 years. You've probably seen every evolution, revolution, prediction, but it seems like now some critical mass is coming into place. We were talking this morning about kind of your take on what's going on in the the wired home network world. Can you just share some insights, kind of where you see things? Sure, I, I'd be happy to. Um, it's interesting, when I came on in 1998, the very first report uh, that I was directed to write was on this home networking phenomenon. And um, it, it truly has been a success story as we look at uh, the consumer and technology and what we tend to call the digital lifestyles. That We've seen tremendous growth in the adoption of home networking, two and a half million households about 10 years ago. And last year we ended with about 41 million U.S. households with a uh, home network, which has been driven in large respect by the tremendous growth in broadband access that we've now uh, seen about 73 million U.S. households with uh, broadband connections. That's more than two-thirds uh, of all households. And I think from the perspective, Alan, of, um, of the service provider and some of the, the wired home networking efforts that we're seeing today, it's the, the big push by service providers to actually deploy home networking equipment, whether that's a router or something we call a residential gateway, which manages triple play services as well as the home network. You look at connected set-top boxes, which providers like AT&T and Verizon have have really been uh, at the forefront of pushing for experiences like whole home DVR. Um, and so the fact that, that we're seeing home networking move from a pure retail play where just a few years ago it was about a 90-10 split between retail delivered home networking products and service provider delivered home products to where the service providers are now accounting for more than a third of home networking deployments. Which says to us that in-home connectivity is, is really a powerful feature that uh, the carriers want to promote. And I, I think we're seeing that for a number of reasons. I think we're seeing that home networking in and of itself is a, um, is a value-added feature. It improves customer satisfaction. That, um, about 80% of all home networks have at least one Wi-Fi node or a router or an access point involved, but we don't think that wired is going away. In fact, we actually see a, a greater use and utility for wired home networks uh, that could include the technologies like home PNA, uh, power line networking technologies like home plug um, or uh, uh, DS2 or this new home grid standard that, um, that is now out there. But actually we're hearing more and more interest from operators in actually deploying blended home networks that would include the flexibility and convenience of Wi-Fi along with assurances for bandwidth, for overcoming latency and jitter. Uh, for overcoming the familiar dead zone, which a lot of consumers experience with their Wi-Fi network. And the reason they're doing that is the home network is going to be required to carry much more than, than today's data signals. Uh, it's actually being used to transmit high-definition video services or signals from point A to point B. And, and we're here still hearing from a lot of consumer electronics companies as well as the service providers, that they're not willing to put all their eggs into the wired backbone that supports the very high quality uh, transmission of things like video. And then beyond video, I was actually talking to a colleague this morning who covers uh, the energy management space. And there's a strong interest in actually uh, deploying hybrid networks in for energy management type of features, where you might have a wireless uh, solution from Z-Wave or Zigbee uh, where there's some communication between a, a smart energy device and the energy meter, but that wired networks like HomePlug or, or HomeGrid um, are also going to serve as a backbone to carry those signals as well. Okay. And your take on G.HN? I think it's a really important uh, specification uh, because it's being driven so heavily by telecom operators in particular, and these are the, the service providers who jumped on board with home networking in the first place. And they were the ones that saw the benefit of deploying no new wires networks to greatly reduce the installation time for services like IPTV. With HomeGrid, which uh, combines uh, signaling for twisted pair, coax, as well as power line over very high speed. And, and I saw the demonstrations at this year's Consumer Electronics Show 
which indicate a, a, a physical layer throughput. Now that's not real world throughput, but um, but physical layer throughput of at least 400 megabits per second. And in layman's terms, that's plenty of, of overhead to transmit the two or three high def streams that the typical home will need, plus carry voice providers to do, is to deploy home networks in a much more flexible manner and account for the, the different topologies that exist in homes around the world. Um, U.S. households, for example, tend to have much higher coaxial uh, cabling penetration than homes in other parts of the world. Power line is typically more widely used in Europe uh, than it is here in, in the States. And then, of course, twisted pairs is, is universal. So it's going to give the operator a great deal more flex flexibility in, in how they deploy connected products. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about Parks and Associates? Because I... I'm always getting your all your emails and all your digital living room and all your great conferences, not only here but uh, in Europe and other parts of the world. Uh, I think you bring a great perspective because you, you're so good at bringing the service providers together, the uh, the content providers all together uh, to your conferences and events. Just kind of an overview of Parks and Associates. Sure. We describe ourselves as a technology and consulting firm that uh, investigates emerging consumer technologies. And the way we do that is we conduct uh, quite a bit of consumer research, uh, surveys and focus groups, and our analysts spend a lot of time just uh, talking one-on-one -on -one to uh, industry leaders in a wide variety of spaces, access services like television and broadband, mobile, mobile devices, uh, consumer electronics, advertising has become an, a, a new area for us, and then this whole concept of energy management, which is, is being promoted so heavily through um, government stimulus plans here in the states, of course, has really generated some interesting um, uh, new uh, businesses for us and new areas to investigate um, for us. I, I think the, the amount of consumer work that we do, the amount of industry discussions that we have, give us a, a unique perspective in this space. I think. All of us are very enthusiastic about what the, the digital lifestyle can mean in terms of enhancements to services and products, but I think we're also realists, too, um, that, that we can take a look at our consumer data and we can say, well, gosh, you know, there, there really isn't as much demand for this product as, as maybe some would have you believe. And so I think what it allows us to do is, is to be very realistic in, in the projections that we're providing the industry um, to... to uh, to take a look at where growth might occur and, and what might stimulate growth in certain areas. And, and as you said, we are very much an international research firm too. Uh, although we're based here in Dallas, we, uh, we're investigating the deployment of digital lifestyles technologies from around the world. And how, your URL, how do people find you on the internet? Well, our URL is www.parksassociates.com. Um, we have a great link to a blog uh, that our analysts are updating uh, all the time, uh, parksassociates.blogspot.com, and several of us are even tweeting from time to time. And you can follow Kurt here on Twitter. That's right. Uh, I think my handle is K-E-S-C-H-E-R-F. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Alan.